congratulations on the series. Thank you. It is fantastic. I, I've been saying to everybody, when I heard Idris Elba and Hijack, I was thinking gunshots, body count, that kind of thing. But this is so much better than yeah. that. Um, how much fun did you have challenging some of the stereotypes and yeah. playing with some of those micro action moments? Well, it's interesting you say that because that, that was one of the things that really attracted me to the project was, you know, when the moment we sort of started talking to Idris about it, it suddenly made, the whole show started to make sense because it was about subverting what your expectations of him are, you know, and, you know, he's not, well, you, you get to find out in the show, so I won't spoil it, but it's about subverting that and, and um, hopefully um, sort of playing against some of the, the, the tropes of the genre. Given all the, um, the stereotypes and the micro actions, how's that, what's that like to shoot in a small metal tube for a long period of time? Um, well, put it this way, I'm not going to be getting on a plane again uh, <laughs> anytime soon, certainly not for nine months. Um, no, it was great, you know, um, it was everything we wanted it to be, which was as real as possible. And um, there's only one way to do that, which is to sort of do it for real. And you have to just kind of live with that decision and, and go for it, you know. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a tight space, but what that gave us was just reality all the time. We didn't have to, like, build back up to that feeling every day. It was like, yeah, here we are, we're on the plane, we're shutting the doors and we're, we're, we're in the hijack again. So, so did you do it all in chronological order as well? So did um, it, it was it was fairly chronological, yeah. We shot the show pretty much in chronological order. I mean, we had to because, you know, when you make a show that's real time, you have to make all these decisions in pre-production and in the first few days of filming that really you're married to for the rest of the show. Where everyone's sitting, uh, what everyone's wearing. You know, if someone gets hit, they've got a bit of blood on them. That's then on them for the next seven hours, you know. It's not like a traditional drama where things can be cleaned up or someone can change their clothes, whatever. So um, you're really stuck with the decisions that you make and without getting too highfalutin about it, that is the reality of being in a hijack as well. Everything you choose to do can have an effect, you know, and um, we really kind of had to learn how to embrace that and go with it rather than constantly trying to fight it and control it. Doing it chronologically, the cabin fever works in your favour eventually. Yeah, oh yeah, it does. Certainly, by the time you get to the final episode, there is the a thousand yard stare and every thousand, the thirty five thousand foot stare in everyone's eyes. Um, but uh, um, you know, I think we we stayed sane partly by you know breaking it up a little bit, and we obviously there are uh, storylines on the ground as well, so we were able to break it up a little bit. But certainly by the end, everyone was ready to stop. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey you guys! <laughs> hey you guys! <laughs> hey, that's what they all say. Hey you guys!